morning, Trinity students and families and teachers. Good morning, Mr. I am so happy to be spending the morning with you in our chapel service. Uh, we, are, we are implementing something new in our chapel service, and that is recognition. Uh, we would really like to take the time to recognize the gifts and talents that God has set within you and, and also to, to emphasize the accomplishments that you have made. And, and so that is what we're going to be introducing into our chapel service. So here's the welcome. Good morning, I'm glad you are here. And I'd like to start off with a few recognitions. And, and if I happen to call your name, um, I, we're just gonna have them stand in place for, for this. How, you want them to come down, want to recognize? I'm sorry, I'm looking right at you, Ms. Marie. <laughs> How about you just stand in, place. stand in place. Let us recognize you and your accomplishments. And, and, and let us let us thank the Lord for the gift that you are. So to start off with, um, we had some students that attended a debate tournament uh, earlier this month, and we would like to recognize from House Lewis, Miss Brenna Chatterton. <laughs> Brenna made it to the Octo Finals, which is uh, the top 16 debaters in the Midwest region, which qualifies her for regional championship tournament. So well done. Uh, from House Joan of Arc, we had a young lady who wrote an essay about the importance of veterans to members of the Macomb BFW, along with other students who placed in the BFW's Voice of Democracy contest. And I would like to take time to recognize Miss Amy Howiter from House Joan of Arc for her third place position uh, in the high school division. We, we have an uh, all-state choir, and we have five students that have been chosen for all-state choir that we want to recognize this morning. And so I'm going to call their names, but hold your applause until the end where we can give them all just a huge round of applause. Okay? So from House Tolkien, we have Gloria Montine and Moses Montine. Where are you? Okay, we can give them individual recognition too. I love your enthusiasm and joy. Keep standing, keep standing. From House Lewis, Brenna Chatterton. From House Martyr, Jacob Watkins. And from House Joan of Arc, Emily Dixon. Give them a huge round of applause. All right, you may have a seat. Now, the final announcement and uh, award that we'd like to present this morning, you can have a seat, Moses, uh, unless you want to come stand next to me. <laughs> uh, we had we had kicked off our house system, and we did so in a very wonderful and, and, and beautiful way, and we had a dodgeball tournament. Now, we would like to see this be an annual house competition, and so we, we have uh, searched and sought out a, a trophy for this annual event that would be hopefully rotating year after year that different houses participate in different houses win the Dodgeball Cup. And so I, I have a trophy behind me. It is a placement trophy uh, because our trophy isn't quite finished yet. And so we will be awarding this today. And I, I'd like to first recognize our second place winners because we have a three-way tie for second place. And so this is just recognition. And so for, for a three-way tie for second place, we have House Lewis, House Carmichael, and House Livingston. And so you can give them a round of applause. And the champions this year of the House Dodgeball Tournament, I'd like to have the uh, House General come and receive this award on behalf of House Martyr. House Justin Martyr, congratulations on the Dodgeball Tournament. You are your team. <laughs> and so I thank you all for, for your joy, for your enthusiasm, and in time for those recognitions. I'd like to ask the praise team to come up. We'll have a time of prayer and, and have a time of worship and song. Will you pray with me, please? Our Father in heaven, Lord, you are good. And in your faithfulness and your mercies are new every day, and we thank you. We thank you for this opportunity we have to gather together this morning. May what we have to offer to you be a fragrant offering, pleasing to you in our time of worship and recognition as we sing these songs of praise and we hear your word being spoken and we hear a proclamation of truth 
We thank you. We thank you for your school. We thank you for our brothers and sisters. We thank you that you've called us to be a family of one body and one life under one name, the only name under heaven by which we are saved. That's the name of Jesus. It's in his name I pray. Amen. Okay, this, this first song is going to require some, some action and movement. And so, no, it'd be a little crazy, wouldn't it? Uh, and so where you're standing, go ahead and stand and recognize the space that you have. And, 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 and for, for this first song, it does, like I said, require some movement. Be mindful of your neighbor. Be mindful of your neighbor, and we're going to praise God this morning. Thank you. 
next song that we're going to be singing, uh, just some verses. Uh, number 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Deuteronomy 7, 9. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Deuteronomy 31.8 It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. In Psalm 139.1-6 O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O oh Lord, you know it all together. You hid me in behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I do not attain it.
mountains go before you and behind you and beside you all around you he is with you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in the coming and you're going and you're waiting and you're going and you're going he is for you he is for you he is for you Today is, if we're recognizing houses from House Livingston, Mr. Owen Runyon. Please welcome him to the floor. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right, so I'm going to start off with a question What are you afraid of? You can just shout some stuff out. Spiders. Snakes. 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 All right. So when you're afraid of something, you avoid it, right? Yes. So kind of like what I did with this chapel speech. <laughs> So when we read in the Bible, we are supposed to fear God. I never understood why would God want us to fear him? Well, it doesn't mean to literally fear him. It means to have reverence and respect for him. Deuteronomy 10, 12 says, And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God ask of you but to fear the Lord your God? Walk in obedience to him, to love him, to serve him with your God, with all your heart and with all your soul. This tells us that we are not supposed to be scared of him, but we are supposed to obey his commands. Fearing him really doesn't really mean we are supposed to love him so much that we serve him with all of our heart and soul. Joshua 4:24 says, he, "He did not. He did this so that all the peoples of the earth might know that the hand of the Lord is powerful." and so that you might always fear the Lord your God. In this section, Joshua, God, Joshua, God has dried up the Jordan River so the Israelites can cross over it, just like when God parted the Red Sea. He did not make the people afraid of him. He did it so they knew how much he loves them and how powerful he is. He is trustworthy and worthy of our respect. Finally, Psalms 25, 14 says, the Lord confides in those who fear him. He makes his comfort known to them. This is telling us that God not only wants us to love him, but he wants us to be able to confide in us in return. He wants, us, he wants to tell us things about him so we can know him better, but he can only do that when we trust and respect him first. So when the Bible says to fear God, it means to have reverence 
and respect for him. When we fear God, he will love us and protect us, so we do not have to be afraid of anything else. Ecclesiastes 12, 13 says, Now all has been heard. There is the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the duty of all mankind. That's, that's a truth that we need to remember. We have a God who's given us beautiful gifts and talents to use for his kingdom. The question is, are we being attentive and obedient to him? Do we trust him? And do we love him? Will you pray with me, please? Our Father in heaven, Lord, thank you that you have granted to us every good and perfect gift. We thank you that you've provided unto us everything necessary for life and godliness. We thank you that you gave your life so that we may live, not just here on this earth, but Lord, that we may live for all eternity with you. In the day that you've given to us, may we walk in reverence of your holiness, and may we recognize your faithfulness and be grateful of your mercy and of your grace. We love you, Lord. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to end with the doxology this morning. And I'm going to start off on a note. And, and those of you uh, note or something, you know, if it's too high or too low. Mm, we good? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Dismiss will begin with pre-K and then kindergarten, first grade, second, and beyond. You all have a wonderful and lovely day today.